This is Diana and welcome to Craft It Sweetly. In this video, I will show you how to use Bukami, the book folding software. This is Bukami book folding software. And I, this is the first program that I started off using to create my patterns. And I do like how user-friendly it is. So somebody, so a couple of the different viewers had asked me if I could do a quick video on how to use this software to create their own patterns. So here is the video. When you open Bukami, you have these four different squares, uh, which have the silhouette library, your create a new pattern and then your previous patterns and then you can also figure out if you already have a pattern what page you should start on but I will mainly focus on these three to show you how to create your own pattern so if you open silhouette library what we need to do is again these are very user-friendly icons and things pretty self-explanatory but just quickly to go over them you want to add a, an image and I'm going to call this Christmas tree lights and you insert an image. And when you click that, it will show you that it has to be a PNG, JPEG, GIF, BMP, or a TIFF. I always load up a PNG file. And the majority of my files I do get from Etsy just because I'm not a graphics designer to create these images from scratch. So I do purchase the files from Etsy. As you can see, I have two different ones here. Um, this one I already manipulated in Inkscape because if you look at this image the pattern extends all the way to the bottom of the file which means that if I were to try and fold this as you're cutting you're actually cutting the bottom of the page so you do need to make the image slightly smaller and just to show you real quick I'll switch over to Inkscape this is the image that I had and initially when I had this image it was all the way to the bottom like this so the pattern the book folding pattern um, maker would not be able to cut this because you're cutting the bottom of the page so to change this I you I downloaded Inkscape which is a free software and to make to minimize this but keep your proportions I mean you can certainly make it you know a wider tree or really skinny tree it's up to you but if you want to maintain the proportions to the tree I hold down the control key and then it automatically minimizes it but keeps the proportion so once you have it to the right size that you want it then I save this file as a PNG file and this is what I did here so this was my original image and then his this is the one that I shrank a little bit and saved as a PNG and if I hover over it you can see that it is a PNG file right there so I will open this and there's the image so I insert this image oops I just did that insert this image open and then you continue so there it is your image now we go back to home and this is where we will we'll create a new pattern and then here you have your choice of the type of pattern you want to create a measure mark and fold you can also do a measure mark cut and fold a shadow and you can do a 180 fold with these if you choose to I did do various videos on these techniques so you can check out my channel for other folding for the these folding techniques this is just to show you how to create the various patterns so let's say you're going to do a measure mark cut and fold for this but again you can choose any of those and then I will go down here. These are all the various images I have uploaded into my library. And here is Christmas tree lights that I just uploaded into the library. And we'll use this selected image. And then you just click down here on create pattern. So what will happen is you'll get this window that pops up that asks you, you can name this file. So we'll call it again Christmas tree lights. And you'll see later why I'm calling it lights. I plan on doing this book fold as a, you know, this pattern as a book fold. And I will be adding lights to this. At least that's the plan. So uh, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned, and hopefully I'll have that video for you um, in the next couple of weeks or so with the pattern and with some uh, nice effect to the book. But subscribe and you'll get the updates when, once I'm ready to post that video. 
um, once you name the the book then you will need to add in the last odd page so let's say this is 387 now you do need to take into account I generally like to use all the book all the pages in the book including any leading pages at the front so if you have a preface that may not have the page numbers like one two three four it may have you know no page numbers or different way of numbering the pages I include those as well but in any case use the last odd page in the book and then the height of the book so let's say 23.4 centimeters and then I click OK it does ask you if you would like to include inset pages and for that it's up to you if you want to skip every other page you can and then just do the every other page as far as the uh, marking measuring marking and folding I will say no so that I'll get more definition to the book so now what the software will do is going it's going to analyze this image and then start creating the pattern depending on how complicated the image is or how much detail there is in it and the number of pages that will kind of determine how long it takes for the software to create the pattern once it goes through the pattern creation you will get this message more often than not where it says there are so many unused pages and would I like to have this pattern recreated to include those 38 image, 38 unused pages. I always say yes, just because it's going to create a more defined pattern. So instead of using 38 unused pages, I tell it go ahead and include those 38 pages. It may take a, a minute for it um, to process this. As you can see, it says it may appear more than once, just as it tries to incorporate all those pages into the pattern. Now that the pattern is completed, this is the window that pops up and it shows you what the pattern, you know, pattern preview, what it will look like once you do your book fold. I do close this window. It does show that I did no insets, as you can see here. And then this pattern will take 194 folds. And these are the specs that I gave for the book. Now the two things that I use here main, most of the time is I don't usually put in a completed photo of the book but you can certainly upload one. I use this and then if you wanted to make the same pattern again with different um, specifications on the book, you know, more pages or less pages, different height on the book, you can edit the pattern. But what I use most is this measurements and then to create a PDF for the pattern. So measurements, if you go into that if you click on that button you will be taken to what eventually you will print out to create the book and as you scroll down what you will see is some measurements are in red just like here and what that means is as you can see these are the same number so it alerts you that you know there may be a slight issue here if you don't change one of these measurements you can certainly leave everything as is and then edit this when you're creating the pattern I usually like to go in and just edit it here so that once I print the pattern, especially if I'm sharing it with somebody, it doesn't get confusing. And what I do with this is you can either decrease the first number or increase the second number. So I'll just go to 19.4 and then for example here it's 16.9 and as you click off of it you can see it disappears. But I just scroll through this and see if I need to change anything. So here again it's 13.3 again you can do this 13.2 or this one 13.4. Okay now just to give you another example here we've got lots of measurements next to each other so here it, I already have a 12.7 so obviously I can change this to 12.7 because then I'll we'll have an issue here. So this one is just going to be 12.9. Sometimes you don't have an option which one you change. Uh, but just go in and change these. And then once you're done, so there's a bunch here. I won't go through all of these. But once you change all of those, then you would have your pattern with no duplicate measurements. So I will close the file and then I create a PDF, which is the PDF file that I need to print out in order to be able to do the, the pattern. You select the folder where it's going. So once I just want to show you, once you open it, this is what it looks like. So you'll have 
the specifics on the book, the type of fold this is, and then this is the printout you're going to do, you know, for your page one. These are your measure, what you need to measure, mark, and then cut, and then same with these. So you're just going to have, you know, some of these pages will have all of these go on one page. So page number 157 will have all these markings and foldings just because of the intricacy of this pattern. I hope this was helpful to show you how to create a pattern using Bukami. There, again, there are other pattern maker software out there. I just started off with this one and I find it really easy to use. If you have any questions, please comment below. Please subscribe. Um, I'll be sharing some other book folding techniques and things like that. But please subscribe and share this video if you found it helpful. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.